artificial intelligence was coming, but the pandemic just accelerated it. And what many people don't realize is it was going to happen, the fourth industrial revolution we're in. It just accelerated it due to the pandemic and with people not wanting to get sick and with the other events going on. So artificial intelligence is here. And I always have to educate people on and say a state that artificial intelligence has been around since the 1950s. You know, even I know, Candace, I know you were a, a Girl Scout. I remember seeing a picture of yours on um, on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, Dr. Candace and I follow each other and I'm pretty sure you play video games. And one of the first examples I give people artificial intelligence is in video games. I remember playing, playing Mario, Super Nintendo. The AI was learning back then. And I remember playing games, seeing AI in the late 80s, early 90s. And I'm like, what is AI? And now when I was not now, but when I was doing my research, I said that was artificial intelligence. When I was eight, and nine years old, it was learning uh, what I was doing. And even in video games now is even more sophisticated and they find different ways to use it. But it's always been around, you know, from the GPS, you were talking about the spell correct, the right documents It's in the healthcare field. It's going to help in the communications field. And, you know, one thing is, um, with you being in the communications field, how do you see artificial intelligence helping people learning to communicate better with people? Because communication is essential and we need to get better at it. How do you think it can improve the communications between humans? Well, let's talk about generative AI. I believe that artificial intelligence can help us um, write content. For example, take content. If you want to make it more relatable, if you want to make it more empathetic, then you can use commands you know, to take your content and then ask the AI tool to, to enhance it and to make it more empathetic. And I, I do believe that's important. As you know, I've researched, you know, communications. You know, I did a study of 1,400 individuals using um using preference by interpersonal communication. That's the way we exchange information and ideas, both verbally or non-verbally. And I found um, for baby boomers, you know, they resonate to active listening. So, you know, paying attention, not looking at a device or looking away when you're talking to someone. For Gen Z, which is my awesome generation, you know, it's around, you know, managing teams and cross-functional communication and collaboration. For millennials and Gen Z, though, it's empathy, you know, being able to put ourselves in someone else's um, shoes, being able to accept that what someone's saying and feeling is authentic and valid, even though you may not have that same perception. And so what I see happening um, is that communications will become much more empathetic. And if that, you know, if you're more direct or, or more factual, um, in your communication, then these tools can help you with your written communication to write it in a much more empathetic way or the tone, or you can use it to test it. Even if you're going to say something, you know, I'm going to call, you know, Patrick and ask him X, Y, and Z, here's what I'm going to say, you know, you know, is this empathetic, you know, is, you know, is this clear? I think mean, these tools can help you with having um, stronger communication tools and approaches that you can consider. So that's one way. And then as these tools advance in terms of how they interact, I remember just watching, you know, over the um, the past year, how even, you know, some of these tools have changed in the way they communicate and give com commands back and forth where it is communicating maybe less robotically. And, and, and you know, it's learning, it's taking, taking that, um, taking the inputs to become, you know, to sound more human. And then there are other tools that can help you even go even further to human, humanize it. So I think it'll be a really good training tool that way, at least for now. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going to go. We've talked a lot about artificial intelligence. Do you have any personal experience with personal experiences with artificial intelligence and how it has impacted you directly or indirectly? Well, one of the things I mentioned earlier was just the fact that, you know, I tested whether or not, you know, content that I would write would be viewed or judged as AI. And I was surprised that when I wrote content, whether it was just a straight, it was, I think I just wrote a paragraph and then I wrote it creatively and then I put it in an AI tool and it said that there was a high probability that it was generated by AI. So that made me really worry about whether or not individuals would be judged on their content 
um, as being actually derived by a human. And so that's something that we want to look at. The other is, you know, when I speak to, you know, younger professionals, millennials and, and Gen Z about where we're going, as I mentioned, there's a lot of excitement that I have around the familiarity. But Patrick, you and I have talked about um, our concerns around people being open and having an open mindset, you know, to being receptive. You know, my husband and I, we talk about it as he, you know, he talks to people he mentors about being open to trying new things. And I've been, unfortunately, also in conversations with younger professionals who are refusing to actually even just test it, to understand it. And so that concerns me, you know, I'm, I, you know, I mentioned there's a, you know, there's a sub sample of individuals who don't believe that their careers or lives will ever be touched by artificial intelligence. And so it concerns me that if you're not even going to try to get more information about it or even just test it, you could be vulnerable. And, and that, that really does concern me. Um, the, the final thing that I'll say about this is, you know, I'm so encouraged by what younger generations are doing to um, craft the future that they want to see for themselves, particularly as it relates to their careers. You know, I read a statistic um, about a year ago that 49% of individuals under age 35 have um, a side gig where they're making $1,500 or more. When we were together last year at Clark Atlanta and I was speaking to a number of the students in the business school, 100% of them had a side business or company. They were founders. And so we see that that's going to be, you know, more prevalent, you know, as time goes on. And I want to make sure that these young people are using these tools to make their businesses better. And, you know, it seems like it's going to happen, but I do okay. worry about people out who, who won't take advantage of. So I encourage anyone listening, mm -hmm. if you haven't tried, safely try to find ways to understand it and to learn it. There are free resources out there to help you understand it, even including this particular podcast series. And then the, and then the last is there, if there are people in your life, you know, ask them, are you familiar with AI? Are you familiar with how machine le learning can help simulate, you know, um, human intelligence? You know, what do you think about it? And if there are tools or resources, you know, sign up to learn more about it so you don't get left behind. Yes, I, I totally agree. I tell everyone right now, right now is the best time. And I mentioned that earlier to learn about artificial intelligence because it's unfamiliar. And this is one of the first times in history, if you think about it, that everyone is on a level playing field. No one knows what the potential artificial intelligence is. Everyone is trying to figure out what it can do in the medical field, the healthcare field, the communications field that you're in, the education field. And everybody's trying to figure out what can we do with it. No one even has a clear answer right now. You know, in the field of research, we would call that a hypothesis or people would call it guesstimating. But we're trying to figure out what can we concretely do with artificial intelligence. And with the advancements of the world and technology, who knows what artificial intelligence can do? You know, back in the day, you saw the movie with iRobots with Will Smith, where the robots were um, doing other um task and doing other things. You know, I think about the movie RoboCop from the late 80s, filmed up there in Detroit, not actually filmed in Detroit, but about the city of Detroit. And OCP is one of my favorite series about a robot that went around and fought crime. I have explained to people and told them, this is not fictional anymore. This is going to be real. You're going to have not an actual robot, but over there at the Mercedes-Benz Dome, a couple of months ago, they actually had those robot dogs out there. If you look look at the um, YouTube channel, Boston Dynamics, and I looked at them when I was researching, many of these items and many of these uh, robots are here already. And the physical form of them, I mean, who knows what they're going to be able to do? You know, they're already researching how we can get robots to deliver packages, how we can get the robots to drive cars. We already have autonomous cars. And I know in the city of Atlanta, it's only a matter of time before it happens. You know, they have autonomous cars because out in Los Angeles and over in California, they already have them. They're testing 18 wheelers. What companies are doing now are doing a lot of R&D, which is research and development to figure out. What can we do with this technology? You were mentioning deep learning. Um, we were neural networks. I mean, what can machine learning do? What can it replicate? Can we replicate the human brain? Because they already use it in sports. They have predictive analysis. The MLB uses it to judge the strike zone. 
That's always been the um, issue. Is it a ball or a strike? We're going to either use artificial intelligence to make processes more efficient, or we're going to eliminate humans, or we're going to let it be collaborative, collaborative with people. But the ultimate goal of artificial intelligence is still undefined. We are trying to figure out what to do with it. And that's why this is the opportunity of a lifetime. As Dr. Candace and I are saying, please get on board, go to school, get your blue collar skill set, get your white collar skill set. We're talking about your engineers, your computer scientists. Uh, we're talking to healthcare doctors, nurses, medical staff. I mean, the mental health field, they're going to be using AI to help out. Uh, with counselors and to diagnose different um, types of um, issues going on with people. In the communications field, Dr. Candace even talked about how artificial intelligence is going to be used um, to help write things out, to help people communicate better. That's why I am so hard on people. This is the opportunity of a lifetime.